first camera I ever picked up was a Pentax ME Super. I can even remember the first picture I ever took, it was a peacock in Clifton Park. Just watching it come up in the developing tray in black and white was just amazing. I used to do a lot of screen printing and uh, gum dichromate printing, which is a process whereby you sensitise paper and then wash off the, um, the, un the unfixed parts when you expose it to uh, ultraviolet light. I think it was when I moved back to Yorkshire, really, that I got back into landscape photography. I started walking, I did a walk up Kinderskat and I thought, hang on, I need a camera here to start recording my adventures and everything like that. For when I'm 60, I can look back on them. And uh, I started taking some really good shots when I was out and stuff like that. Uh, and I won a competition in May 2009. The prize was a photography holiday with a workshop in it. From then, I've sort of shifted from walking to more going out and waiting for the shot and take, you know, spending all my time on landscape photography, really. I've been interested in photography since I was a very small boy. I borrowed my dad's box browning camera. We developed these using contact prints and it was fantastic. And from that moment on, I thought, yeah, I quite like this. Over the years, my uh, sort of interests have really come on and I've, I've really enjoyed actually uh, getting out into the hills and uh, taking the photographs. I'm always being more technically minded, so that's what attracted me to photography. You get to show my creative side through a technical medium. You, know, you can take about six different photographers to a location and we'll all probably come up with something slightly different because we all see colour depth or colour temperature slightly different anyway. We've all got different ways of how we post-process and, and what we're trying to show to the viewer. I think it's the chance really to spend time out in the landscape, to get to know a landscape really well through coming back time and time again in different weather conditions and different seasons and times of day. I'd, I'd come out to places like this even if I didn't have a camera with me because these are the kind of landscapes that I really love to spend time in. I've done a bit of all sorts. Uh, I did weddings for a number of years and I found that every weekend you were shooting weddings and what I really loved was doing landscape stuff. It, it's just fantastic to be in a location like this uh, amongst the heathers, amongst the stone, amongst the grasses. It, it's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Well, this particular image that I've chosen was taken on um, a January morning on Higa Tour a couple of years ago. It's a nice atmospheric picture which kind of captures the sort of conditions that I really want to put into my images, but also as well because it came out of nothing. When I first arrived there, um, I parked at the bottom of Higa Tour and it looked like the top was in cloud. So I kind of thought that it was going to be another early rise for a hide into nothing. But when I got up to the top, I saw the sun kind of just sneak between the horizon and the cloud and thought that was probably going to be it. And maybe about 10 or 20 minutes later, the sun rose high enough and, and, and just lit up the clouds around Higator in this kind of wonderful golden light. And it was kind of one of those sort of eureka moments. I've got a picture of a Highland cattle, but they're actually based in uh, Baslow on Baslow Edge. And last summer, uh, I was tromping through, determined to get a picture of one of these cars late evening. There was one that was quite tame, and I just kept approaching it closer and closer, looking through the viewfinder, but I had a really wide angle lens on, so it looked like it was miles away, but actually it was really close. I took one last shot, stuck the uh, camera right in its face, got it where I thought it should be, off the hip shot, uh, got it, and it turned out really well. People always say, is that a real sheep? Is it a stuffed sheep? You've carried that up there, it's been photoshopped. I saw the sheep on the rock as I approached and I managed to get round, tried not to make eye contact with the thing, uh, walked backwards a bit and then eventually he just turned. I'd set my camera up and got the shot. And I'm, I'm really pleased with that one. It's got to be the great master himself, Ansel Adams, without a doubt. Edward Weston, uh, Colin Pryor, his 6x17 landscapes of Scotland were just you know, awesome. Uh, and his dedication to it as well, you know, spending days out up on the hillside, camping out until they got the right light. People in the Peak District, taking pictures of the Peak District and showing me that I want to go there. Uh, and that gives me the inspiration and motivation to go. I mean, there's people like Andy Hemingway that's been at it much longer than me. And I can remember back from when I first started out, his images and people like that on Flickr was jumping out at me and making me want to go places. What really inspires me is actually getting out of here, seeing this, and. Uh, at, you know, just soaking up the atmosphere. It's fantastic, and this is what I get my inspiration from. It's the skies that really make the difference to your photographs. 
it's that atmosphere that I try and bring out. Another one of my big interests is history and the origins of how places got their name. So it's kind of like the story of the landscape as well and how people have used the landscape over the centuries. We've got these fantastic gritstone edges, all the beautiful hills. We've got the brackens, we've got the grasses. And I like to be able to try and bring out that quality of the, of the landscape to bring the richness of the colours and uh, try and get the feeling and atmosphere. And we get some fantastically dramatic skies at times and that's the times when I, I get really excited. You can see the clouds building, you can see the light shooting through, that's the magical time. Getting up nice and early, getting that lovely warm light first thing in the morning as it shoots across the landscape. It's fantastic and that, that's what really I really enjoy. A beautiful picture for me is a picture that tells a story. Someone just standing there looking over a view and that and it tells you, the viewer, what's happening there. That makes the picture for me and even from amateurs, if I see photos like that from amateurs, and it, it, that talks to me more. It can help to add movement to an otherwise static image. Uh, I mean, it's used a lot really in photographing things like seas and uh, lakes. Uh, you get good movement with water, but also as well you can, you can put movements into your images through fast moving clouds or on a day like today when wind's whipping the heather or the bracken around. It can help to add like a little bit of interest to a static image. One like they laid a power plug hole, created like it was uh, all milky and silky flowing down. Um, at that time now to make it even more surreal, that's good. Also waterfalls, especially in autumn. I don't like frozen shot waterfalls, so a long exposure there is also really good. If you've got changeable weather with blowing clouds and stuff and you want to take a bit of a surreal picture, it's always good to do that and then perhaps take it in black and white and convert it and it's just good to just show movement in your shot. So what you use is a, a graduated neutral density filter. I've got one on my camera here and basically it's just a grey bit that goes across the clouds and what they do is it helps hold back the light from the sky, balances up between the landscape and it helps bring out the drama and all the beautiful quality and texture in the skies. Three things, tripod, spirit level and grad filters. Three things that all slow me down, make me not rush my composition. If I could take any camera uh, you give me, I'd rather have them other three things. I've got a real passion for black and white, but I don't often get the chance to, to do it. Um, particularly when you're out in the Peak District like today with Heather being such a you know, deep purple colour. Black and white takes a different kind of scene. You're looking for texture, shape, shadows. Um, with this colour you tend to be looking colour that will catch the eye out. Black and white shots you can push the contrast a lot more generally than in colour. It's something that kind of suggests itself. There's so much vibrancy in the world and especially around the Peak District, especially when like, all the Heather's out and stuff like that. Black and white takes a different discipline. You've just got to see shapes and textures and shadows. But then you can also see some shots that call for black and white. I always compose an image in the viewfinder. It's great if you're using a wide angle lens to have something in the foreground, to give that little bit of foreground interest and something maybe to help lead the eye into the photograph. See up to the horizon and it gives you the sense of depth. 80-20 rule is if you've got a really great sky but a bit of a naff foreground then use about 20% of the actual frame for the foreground and use 8% for the sky. And if it's the other way around, you've got a really great foreground but a really naff sky then use, give only the sky 20% of the frame and use 80% of it for the foreground. Sometimes I'll break the rules all together like my cow shot where I'm smack centre on really close. So I just try and assess each scene and compose what I think is best and I think if you look through the portfolio you'll see lots of different types of composition, not, not a certain style. I think like a lot of photographers I quite like winter uh, when you get the frosts, that's, that's my sort of favourite time of year. But I think every season's got its pros and cons. I mean at, at this time of year you've got the heather out, um, during the spring is when the trees are first coming into bud. In the autumn you get all the autumn colours on the trees and obviously in winter you get frosts and snows and generally they tend to be a bit more kind of um, sort of dramatic weather conditions. So I think if I had to choose one of the four seasons it would probably be winter. I also uh, shoot panoramic images uh, where I shoot a, re a range of images which are stitched together. The trick with using panoramic photograph is to have basically a bookend 
So have a shot, have something on the left hand side of the image and then feel your way through the image and have again something at the other end to sort of bookend the image and it gives sort of a, a beginning and end to it. Uh, my recommendation is to use ND grads really. Uh, I mean if you get like quite a strong ND grad you can really make sure the cloud pops and polarizers as well they're really good it's, if it's on a bright sunny day polarizers can make clouds really pop and fluffy and everything like that uh, atmosphere waiting around waiting for that right light usually sunset sunrise go out in changeable weather for sure uh, if you go out in changeable weather you're bound to grab some atmosphere if you're lucky